Hi guys, it's Tim with Event Office and Inflatable Office, and I wanted to show you um, how to make a dashboard widget for your coming events. Um, I've heard a lot of people ask about this. It's something that we had standard uh, on your dashboard before, and um, if you look at it now, um, it's not in there. So it's something we didn't put in there because um, it's an easy one to make, and we didn't actually really think people cared that much about it. So I'm going to show you how to make it, and possibly we will add that one by default for people in the future. So uh, anyway, it's really simple to make. So first thing we want to do is if we're looking at events that are going to be happening, um, then we usually are going to have them on our calendar. So I would usually look and see like what statuses are set to be in my calendar. And usually there's like a line of demarcation. So this is hold and it's not going on the calendar and probably everything below that's not going on the calendar. This is contracted and I have in my accounts that set to go to the calendar in this demo account. Check another one. Yeah, that one is too. So most likely, and you, you might know these right off the top of your head, but uh, so I can tell in this account, the contracted confirmed and complete are ones that I'm planning on servicing. Um, and I want them to show in my coming events, anything in those statuses. So that's the first thing I want to figure out uh, because it's going to help me build my filter. So I'm going to go to filters and uh, I'm going to add a filter and I'm going to call it um, contract confirmed up. Oh, I could type and complete events. Uh, so then I'm just going to do, I'm going to look up status and I just have to put these in. So uh, that one contains contracts and then I have to do or because I want to add more to it, right? I want to add any, if they're in any of these, they don't, they don't have to be in all of them. It's not possible. So I think it's confirmed. And then this one also, or, and we'll do complete. Uh, now I, I can add a time range on here too, if I want. Um, I don't have to, I could just use the time range um, on the dashboard. So that's what I'm going to do in this case. I'm not going to put a time range on this. I'm just going to, if I wanted to put a time range, what I would do is I would say, and uh, lead, uh, don't get confused with the rental start date. Uh, rental, what is that? Rentals start, something like that. There it is. Some people are choosing that one. Um, that's probably not the one you want to use. That's more for um, if you have, when you're kind of looking at, um, Maybe you have rentals that are going out at different times on the same lead. Okay. We want the lead start date time. So I think any of those ones in that list will work, but I like this one best. Uh, and so then we would, you know, probably do like the next you know, 30 days or something. And we would add it as a group. Uh, so now we're saying any of these could be the case, but it all, always has to have this with it too. I'm not going to do that on this one because I think that um, this is a useful filter without the time range in many cases. So I'm going to leave it without the time range in this case. So anyway, save that. Um, and you notice I did, <laughs> looks like I played with this before. Um, I did make it a lead one. So it's a filter type of leads. So, uh, and let's go over here to the dashboard and we're going to go ahead and say, we want to add a data table and we're going to call this coming events um, and my report would be uh, we will have to choose a report um, I didn't show you how to make a report but we could do that we're going to just do default lead view that's a pretty common one that you're going to want to see here I think everyone will probably have that in their reports um, but you could change that to get the columns that you want if you want to do that differently uh, again, here we want to do the lead start. And we're going to do, uh, we'll probably set a default here. We can always change it on the on the actual um, chart or that we see. So, uh, okay, so here we go. There's our next 30 days. Um, I guess doing a, a, a report will allow us to sort this. So that's the one thing that's missing. You see this is not really sorted by date. So if I do a report, it'll, I'll be able to sort it. So I'll show you that too. But you can see here, we can just change it. We can do, you know, last 12 months or whatever we want. Um, so let me go ahead and do a report though. And then I can show you how to sort. So we go to reports. Um, I'll go 
ahead and add one. And we'll call this, I'll call it my coming events report. And I'm going to try to do this really quickly. So I'm not going to add a lot of stuff into it. Just some basics. Um, and total, just do a couple things here. Right there. Uh, so here's what we want to do. Let me go ahead and say this. Go back in there and take a look at that real quick. Try a different time column. Let's just do date. There we go. That's why I couldn't sort by it. So we are going to sort by the date. Okay, so we'll use date, not date and time. I, I, like, I like to use date and time a lot, but um, I guess you know, the sorting doesn't like that. So we're going to do it by that. The sort direction is ascending. Um, and we'll go ahead and save that. So now we have the report too. So we can come back over to our dashboard. We can edit this and we can say, I want to change my report to, uh, there it is, coming events, update it. Okay, now we get just what we want in there. It's sorted in date order um, with the most, the nearest one on top. And that's how easy it is to do that. And you can see even I made a couple little mistakes there, but was able to quickly um, just adjust it to get what I wanted. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed the video. We'll catch you later.